Can he get around his man? He can! Look at the gas! Look at the gas! Try! Welcome to ODT Rugby Chat, brought to you by Garador. Get across to uh, Cocker Valley and see my old mate Gerald across there. If you're looking for a new door on your garage, he's the guy to see. Right, so we're back. Club Rugby's back. Starts tonight. Uh, starts tonight at 5.30. So uh, if you're not going away for Easter, make sure you get along and um, watch one of those games. Look, so I've gone to the top. I've got Warren Kearney, who's the new Ralph Perkins. He's the community rugby manager. So welcome along, Warren. And I wanted to get uh, some of the heavy sponsors, and I wanted Chris Hart, I wanted Mark Scully, and I wanted uh, Finchie from Spates. None of them are available, so I've had to go to uh, Liquorlands only to Murayone. Um So he's uh, he's representing the sponsors here today. Welcome along, mate. Good to see you, but you're going to shirt on. Yeah, you can uh, get the sponsors, but you got someone as big, so that's right. Right, up, boys. Let's talk. Let's have a look. Let's, there's lots. Of, there's a lots of stuff to cover, and I've covered quite a bit of in uh, in my column in the paper, which is out today as well. So, look, Warren, mate, we'll start with you. So, what's um, what's life like without Ralph Perkins? Well, I'm still going through the 500 folders he's left me. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, and they, none of the, they'll be all handwritten too, are they? No, he's actually advanced himself. There's, right. there's quite a few in the file in the archives. So. He normally gives me a phone call every other day just to check in and see how Make things sure are going. So he's, he's a handy man. So it's, but it's a, like it's a big hole though, isn't it? I mean, look, he, he took longer to leave than um, Winston Churchill. It took him so long to leave the job, but it's, it's, it is a big hole to fill, isn't it? Oh, 100%. You can't buy experience, can you? And there's all those wee nitty gritty questions you get from our good community people. And you go, oh, yeah, I'll just check on that one. <laughs> I'll call you back. Yeah. Righto, so mate, so speaking of the sponsors, where the hell is Hardy? He's just disappeared for the week. Uh, he had the drill game uh, as TMO uh, in Fiji, so... Oh, he's still there, just like a beach whale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he's on his way back at the moment. Right. Okay, so look, um, let's, talk, let's start. Look, I've talked about some stuff tomorrow. So look, t- tomorrow, I won't ask this of, um, of Warren because this is probably a wee bit hard for him to ask, but this is more of a club thing. So talk to me about this new Marxist regime we've now got at the CRC. So they've decided in their infinite wisdom over the summer... Um, to penalise the clubs that are doing really well. So Kuiper and Dunedin have had, over the last few years, they've had, they've, they've had five or six junior cult sides, right? Um, and up to, up to six junior cult sides. But they've decided to stop that, and now you're only allowed two teams. What's your, what's your take on all this? Don't necessarily have to agree with it, but I think we've got to just see how it goes. It sounds like um, the junior cults uh, team entry numbers are about the same or more. Um, so it sounds like a few more teams, uh, clubs have got uh, two teams in the junior college grade. So good to see in that way, but would have been nice to see it achieved while keeping other the you know, the, the last year's uh, competition structure. But we'll see how it goes. Anyway. Yeah, look, I've said to, I've said in the paper that um, look, I don't think um, it will necessarily send players to other clubs, and they could actually end up with. Um, I will ask Warren shortly about competition numbers, but. Does, it doesn't mean that those players will. Are players going to walk away from the game because of this? Well, as I said before, like we'll we'll see, we'll we'll truly see this year, and it could be a really good thing. Um, but yeah, we'll just have to get through the season and and review at the end. Geez, that's a very that's a very sit on the fence mm. answer. Isn't it? <laughs> Um, perhaps I should have asked you that question. Um, no, so I'll just adjust you there. You see, only two teams, but they actually have three club cops teams each, so it, they're not too far off. Well, that's but only two per grade, though, isn't it? Yeah, so three in total across the two grades. Right. Okay. So, um, talk to me about so you're, you're the community rugby managers. What does that really mean? Tell me what that really means. Good Ralph question. would spend an hour to give me an answer, but I want a shorter version from you. Oh, at the end of the day, it's to support our clubs and schools, our volunteers in the community, and supporting around our competitions, providing opportunities. How do we grow the game, and how do we support the clubs and schools to do their job that they do so well? Right. Okay, that's a, that's a better answer than Ralph would have given us. Uh, so, mate, um, <laughs> but, is it, but, but is, is it a lot? There must be a lot of work because there's not many of you, is there? No, I, it's, I'm learning that quite quickly. To be fair, the big parts, obviously, we get certain requirements from New Zealand rugby that come down. Um, so we've got to try and share that information with our clubs and our schools. And then on the other side of that, we've got a number of committees that do great jobs, that are volunteers, as yep. we know. Yep. So how do we support them to fine-tune their role to make it easier for them? Right. Because I know time is precious too. Do you spend, do you boys, who spend, who goes in, is anybody going into schools now and running and running sessions for them? I know a lot of the sports do that. A rugby went away from that at one stage. Are we back doing that yet? Yeah, it's probably not as what it used to be. I remember when I used to work for Target, 
15 years ago. You were doing what we yeah, used to do. Yeah. Um, we've got that in the definite women and girls space with our participation managers trying yeah. to dry, drive the numbers there. Um, and then we've just got to sort of that. We believe that if we get coach education right, coaches are what? Create a great quality experience. Yeah. And so if they create good experiences, then our players stay involved and get involved in the game. So okay. if we don't get that part right, then it's all well and good giving a player an experience in the schools. But if they don't get a good experience in that club environment, team environment, then are they going to stay in the game? Right. Yeah. Just on the back of that, I think that's what I've been sort of talking to people about over the last year is everyone's focused on playing numbers. And yep, it's true, but it's actually from the experience, not just with coaches, but volunteers. I think the biggest pain point at the moment is finding volunteers and then finding capable ones as well to, yep. to build that environment that kids want to be in, you know, involved in footy when they come out of school. Yeah. Right, so look, talk to me about, um, I know I've only learned about this in the last few days, and to me, again, it's like the lunatics are running the asylum. Um, we're now going to have match, I'm hearing, we're now going to have match controllers at all Premier Games, which I think, well, it's possibly a good idea. Uh, and so you're going to have both teams on one side of the field so they can manage when they're running referees, about subs on, all that sort of stuff. But, mate, we haven't got enough referees, so why, this seems to be to be just um, absolute lunacy. I mean, I know from my experience of being in Brandon's seat as the referee education officer, um, there were multiple different uh, incidents during my time in terms of poor sideline behaviour um, and everything else that goes on within a game. So um, I think the more people you can get involved from the community to, to help out and be involved, it might be the first step to them actually taking up the whistle later or... But just to help out our refs who have a hard time in the middle there, as you know, Paul. No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just struggling. I, I think struggling with this. Talking to Brandon about it though, actually, it's it's not going to be taken out. I guess the current workforce of our referee group. It's They're not doing. Who are tired or injured or not currently refereeing. Is he going to? Where's he? Is he going to get them though? There's only four, within only four games. Oh, yeah, I suppose you're right. Yeah. So it's finding those people that are not no longer refereeing, right. keeping them involved in the game. Right. And then that helps us promote them through our performance environment. You know, if we need them for the next level up, then they're going to experience it. Yeah. Too. But we still, right now, like I know that we don't have enough ref, we don't have enough referees right. right now, and I think he's quite a few short. So are we not better to be right now focusing on that rather than having to put? Uh, uh, put it to put it and then, then put another cog in. Yeah, I mean uh, they're two different things, right? As I said, those four that are doing each week are probably not going to be refereeing anyway. anyway. But what we need is our clubs and our schools to own it. Brandon can't just keep putting out social media posts saying we need new referees. No, look, so, look, so look, that's look, a different yeah, look, different no, piece, I totally agree. I mean, I think um, I think uh, uh, finding referees is, is not just a referee. Mm. It's not Brandon. That's everybody's it's job. Yep. Um, that's clubs. That's schools. And, and I think. We've been trying to push that message out here that it's not their responsibility; it's it's our responsibility because it's our game. Correct. So I understand that, but from what I can see right now, I don't know if we're doing enough in that space between Brandon and the clubs and the schools yep. right now. Yep. So that's I think that's got to be our doesn't that, again, doesn't have to be yeah. our <laughs> again like uh, I think it comes back to what I was talking about before. So there's not enough volunteers already to do the rugby. Yeah. And so. You know, we're we're asking them to do more now, and it's it's tough to find these people, and it's, yeah, it's, it's tough it's, to get them to. If you don't find them, then you're adding more workload to the ones that are already doing well, lots. And the clubs will tell you that as well. They can't get enough, and a lot of clubs can't get coaches. They can't get volunteers. Nobody wants to go on a committee, and I don't blame them. But yeah. it's just hard. To, it's yeah. just a really tough space. But um, so, are we going to ask this match controller to try and temper? Crowds? How? That, that's just about impossible. I think well, that has to be even, again. That, that goes back on the clubs to sort that out. But that's. The, I think the match official, or whatever they're called, is supposed to be from the club that the game has been played at. Ah, well, that, well, that, well yeah, if, that, if that is the case, that's not a yeah. bad idea. I think the idea originally was trying to have a, a club person that was to look after their sidelines, right? Is yep. to protect their, their people yep. and, and make sure they support them. But we appreciate not everybody's a registered rugby person that comes along and watches the game. Yep. So where does that sit as well? It's challenging, right? Right. OK, well, look, well, let's, look we'll watch this space. Um, uh, let's talk about... OK, I'll come back to you, mate. So let's talk about player numbers. So... <laughs> You'll have seen the num because everybody has to register and all that sort of thing. So where are the player numbers are yeah. from junior Colts through to 
through to Premier Year right yeah, now. Yeah, we don't actually, actually have the numbers at this stage. Right. It's, it's that typical way until the feet get on the dance floor, we can't actually count them. And so that we, we know our team entries, which will give us... Well, okay, let's talk about that. So we know that we've got nine teams and Prems. So where are we at with, where are we at with in, the, in the Prem 2 grade? Yep, cool. So we've unfortunately lost Tyree, but they have jumped into the senior grade. So they're light for light, so they're in the Prem development team. Yep. Um, and we've... Yeah, so we're down to nine from ten. So that's the one. But I'm also hearing we've got we're really some of the clubs yeah. are really struggling. Yeah. I know that Harbour have been, defaulted a couple of preseason games. So will yeah. they have a team, and will Southern have a yeah. team? So I suppose we, but they're supposed yeah. to front because they're playing. That's, aren't they playing tomorrow night alongside the Prems? Correct. So that's. I mean, we're hearing odd rumours. There'll be our, our flag. If anything, is that development great? Yeah. In terms of actual numbers turning up. Right. Um, but. We and and, and, and these teams are going to play tomorrow, uh, tonight at 5.30, sorry, so they're going to play tonight at the, at the same time. Yeah. So that's going to put a real squeeze on those clubs that mm -hmm. are, are shorter numbers anyway. Correct. Okay, so you're saying you've got nine currently then in, yep. the, in that peach. Oh, so that yep. means you've got an Eastern team still in? Yep. So where about, what's your senior competition like then? Seniors is actually, um, we got 11 up from 10 last year, and we've added Dunedin, they've added a second team. Well, that's a bit up in the air too, isn't it? From what no, I hear. Right. Right. Yeah, I've heard all this before. Um, we've also added Eastern, so now they've got a but, team in both grades. Right. Well, that's positive. So when is so when's that competition going to kick off? Yep. So that's starting on the sixth of April. So that's yep. so that's Saturday week. Yep. Okay. And we've also got Tory who've gone into the seniors, which they weren't previously. And I've dropped their drop their drop down. So, okay, so let's talk about Prem Colt because when that I understand that's now not kicking off till the thirteenth of April. Why is yeah, that? Yeah, correct. No, just looking at the entry numbers, and we've added this year um, two more teams. Um, so there's eight teams in the competition with Lambert Union and Green Island added to the Premiership Colts. We lost Harbour. We lost them halfway through last year anyway. Right. So they're not um, so there. We're, we're technically, we're on at this eight. stage, you've got eight. Yeah. And again, I'm hearing that that as again as a wait and see. But isn't it the, the real worry with that is how many games are those Prem Colts kids going to play? Yeah, well, remember they a, have four or five weeks off during yeah, the year as well. Yeah, they've got a, a single round robin, and then they're doing a split. But like the Prems, in terms of odds, play evens. So we they're going to get. They out. should be getting. Uh, they yeah. should be getting seven and three, ten or eleven yeah, games. 11 is that enough? Do you think is that enough games for if you're a Prem Colts rugby player in town? I think I think it all will round out quite well. Yeah, at, at the end of it, like you some years. Missed the positivity there. I thought I was going to get more. Some years they just it's hard to get them bloody you know out of their flat. Yeah, uh, for training and that sort of stuff. So I think around that eleven thirteen mark uh, will sit quite nicely. Right. Mm. Okay, so okay, so that's that, and then we come down to that uh, junior cult yeah. grade. So where are we at now? It's the exciting news, mate. We're up to fifteen now. Yeah, I just can't keep... believe that. For poor, a old, poor old Isaac trying to do a draw in every week. Another team gets entered. So they've got <laughs> so they've got fifteen. So where have they got teams from? Yep. So they've added um, Green Island. They've got a second Colts team. Junior. Oh, they got two Colts. junior Colts yep. teams. And then you've got Zingary University. They added a second. Um, Championship Colts team, Harbour have got two now, and Southern one. And we're just minusing one, Dunedin obviously, we spoke about earlier. Um, they've dropped one junior Colts team, so they had three last year. Yeah, they've there, gone into two. Yeah. So in, in overall, we've gone from 11 to 15 teams on paper. <coughs> on paper, yeah. That'll be, that will be really interesting, because I know that some of those clubs are really struggling with numbers. I know I've talked to Southern, and they are, they are really struggling. They've only got... The last time I heard, they only had 20-odd players for two teams, so you, you ain't going to run two yeah. teams. Yeah, like and that, that. I mean, for our role, we've just got to take the entries and, and trust in what they say they've got and, and then and, and go with so when it's, all, it's okay, so they're going to, when they, they start the 13th as well? Yeah, so the, the draw hasn't been finalised just because teams yep. have been entries, so we're going to have a couple of grading games and then look at how that structure looks from there. Because you want to, you hopefully you'll get you want to split that because you'll end up you don't want to kids getting smashed every week, do you? Yeah. So will you try and split that competition quite quickly? And, and that's a, is that what to be with the senior grade, right? Some some teams don't want to play the the top end if they just need to you know, have a competitive game of rugby. Yeah. And that, that's what we want that championship cults, isn't it? Yeah. Competitive yeah. rugby. Each week. Well, because we want, we want the kids to keep playing. Uh, mm -hmm. And if you're getting beaten by eighty or ninety points every week, that's just not going to happen, is it? Correct. So yeah, we will be looking at that. Okay, boys, let's have a look at the competition itself then. The prem comp look back to the prem competition. So as I said, we're kicking off tonight. Uh, we've got our nine teams. Uh, I've done a piece on this in the paper. 
Um, Zingaree, are they the new Melbourne Storm um, of the competition? They've been, they've been splashing the cash. They've picked up a lot of new players. Are you hearing much about this? I actually had Stuntman uh, from Zingaree in at my store today. I, I did ask him if he had any money left to buy the beers he bought. <laughs> um, but no, I, I'm hearing, and I've seen their team named, they look very strong. Um, just in general, I think this might be one of the sort of most well-rounded competitions um, before the season starts. Yeah, well, paper, I've, anyway. well I've picked them, I've, look, I've, I've stuck my neck on the block and I've actually picked them to win the competition. It's a, they're going to go from last, I think they want to be second last or last last year, I'm picking them to win it. You can't spend that much money and not win the competition. So where do you see them, where do you see them fitting? Oh, I definitely see them competing for, that top, for a top four spot. Yep, yep. you do? Yeah. What about you hearing? I mean, look, we're not, I'm not bagging these guys for spending money. If they've, if they've got money to spend, but that's up to them. I know that the CRC is going to do some work around this space this year, and I'll talk about that over the next few weeks. But, um, look, I mean, from if you're a Zingari supporter and you've been you know, finishing la pretty much last every year for the last mm. 10 years, this is great for them, isn't it? Oh, I, I, they're an amazing club in terms of how, you know, always the game is their slogan. Yep. Is, there's not many clubs that can hold their heads up the way they have for a number of years and you know, still, still they're working really hard on the scene. So credit to obviously Williams and now coaching them, um, credit to what they're trying to get to and I really hope they do have a successful season. Because I'm also hearing their Prem Colts side is looking pretty strong too. Yeah, that should be pretty yeah. good. If I'm having a so where season. have you got them? Do you, do you see mm. them in the top four? I think they'll be they'll be pushing for. I think there's going to be a real log jam between as Tamura said a real close competition. That sort of that fourth third fourth space. I reckon there could be four or five teams looking for that. Yeah, look, so look, I've so in the paper I've picked. Uh, so Tamura, I've got um, Zingari certainly going into the, uh, the into the playoffs into the top six as the top team. I think I've got Southern looking really strong. Of course, JL's picked fifty players, so he could run three teams. Um, but I, I see them possibly finish, finishing second. I see Dunedin reasonably strong and recruited well. They'll probably they could be third, and I'm still thinking Kaikara good enough could finish fourth. And I'm sort of got um, uh, Varsity and Tyree picked for any at that top six. Where are you, where are you seeing it? Yeah, I, I think Kaikara and uh, Southern uh, will be there again, or there thereabouts. Uh, Dunedin, I think. Dunedin will make the four. They've just won't touch wood. We know that. Uh, and then, yeah, it's just wide open from there, I reckon. So do you, you've got, you've got, you've got, you've got, you've got to say Southern have a reasonable chance to go three in a row. Yeah, I think they've got a few returners and then added some, some good players in there as well from other clubs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. JL, I can't believe JL. Um, right, so Warren, I'll bring you in and see your thoughts on that. So... Um, Zingari, you, you, you obviously said it was potential. Who do you see being, the, say, the top four sides then? Yeah, it's a good point. I've been so deep in Perky's buddy notes, haven't had a chance to get around and see much yet. Right. But um, yeah, the word on the street from some of our staff are going around. Um, obviously, Dunedin are looking pretty pretty good. Yep. And, and, and Kaikara. I'll be interested to see how Varsity kicked back this year, obviously, in, in terms of, you know, didn't, they finished strong last year, but um, will they, you know, kick on a bit more this year? Yeah. I think you, and I looked at that Varsity squad, and, I, and they do look quite strong. Uh, they've lost a couple of key players. They, um, they've lost their way. The winger's gone, isn't he? Jeremiah. I think he's away. He's definitely out. What's his name? Uh, Jeremiah Arsi. I think he's gone. Uh, anyway, so boys, let's talk, about the, let's talk about the games this weekend. Uh, well, not this weekend, tonight. So we've got, um, and this is, I just... This, will, this is going to be a really tough game. For, I'd hate to be the referee in this game. So Harbour, Harbour are playing, I've got Zingaree at home. Um, mm. Down there, look, it could be it could be an absolute battle. Mm. So Harbour, Zingaree, mm. what are you thinking? Flinging and tired, I talked to Jeremy coaching there at Harbour, and he's had a few injuries up front, yep. which concerns me for him, um, firstly. And I think Zingaree are going to come in pretty excited. Um, so I, it'll be close, and I might pick Zingaree just. Picking Zingaree? Because uh, they've lost their first five as well. He's gone. Yeah. He was. He he's really steered their ship for them last year. He'll Obe. be. A, yeah, yeah. Obey Samade. So he'll be a he'll be a big loss. So what are you picking? Harbour and Zingari. Uh Yeah, Zingari. Usually Harbour has the big pack, but it looks like uh, Zingari's going. Down. I'm hearing the Zingari pack is huge. They've, they've added Mika Muffy from from Southern, and they're, they're big. at huge cost. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so okay, so you're picking uh, Zingari. Yeah. Okay, so Tyree and Vasti, and this will be close. Mm -hmm. What are you picking? Yeah, I don't know on that one, to be, to be fair. Uh, I'm going to go with Varsity. Going Varsity? Yep. 12 and under? Yep. 
What about you? Yeah, Vasty. Well. Yours, fit Vasty. Mm. Okay. Um, now, this. Let's talk quickly. Talk about our you boys. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not hearing good things. They are really struggling. They've got reasonable numbers, as we talked yeah. about before, but I hear they they they've been beaten by two of the country sides. I think they lost to. Um, they got beaten by 60 by Athletic from Omaru on the weekend, and the weekend before they got beaten by 60 by, by Clutha. So that doesn't bode well for them. I don't see them getting anywhere near Southern, especially I see that Pari Pari Parkinson might be turning out for them, just to add to the size of their back. Yeah. So do you give AU any chance in that game? I think it'll be, as you've said, it's going to be tough for them um, against the defending champions. So I think, yeah, Southern are going to be too, uh, too strong for that. What about you, Simon? Yeah, so. Okay, and in that last game, we've got Dunedin at home to GI. Dunedin finished second last year. I think GI made the top six from memory. Um, so what are you picking? I mean, you've seen a bit of Dunedin. Dunedin versus GI, close? Yeah, it'll be close. I think they've got Finn Hurley and Jake Tiwi playing, so um, they can break a game open, but I'll, I'll stick with the stick Sharks. Stick with the Sharks. And what about you? Yeah, I, I agree, Joe. I've got a couple of boys back for this week, but I think what I'm hearing from Dunedin, that um, they're traveling quite well, so... Probably Dunedin just. But they Dunedin because they've got a few in that um, Islander Colts team. But they not they, they won't be allowed to play this week, are they? I'm not sure if they're all back yet or not. Not allowed to play. Not to. <coughs> yeah. So that'll make it a bit tougher yeah. for them. They'll, yeah, it could be quite close. Okay, so look, there it is. Look, my, my thoughts on it. Harbour Zingaree. I think Zingaree win 13 plus. Uh, they'll be too strong for Harbour. Harbour have got a lot of work to do, and, and as the boys have talked about, they've got a few players out. Tyree and Varsity nearly cl too close to call, but I'll I'll stick with Tyree at home. Uh, but it'll be 12 and under. Southern and AU, well, that could be that could be anything. Uh, if Southern click, I sort of fear how AU will shape up to that. And in that Dunedin GI game, well, I'm not going to pick the span of heads. I'll pick Dunedin, um, but I think it'll be really, really close because as the couple of Highlanders back um, for GI and uh, with that wee, with the wee mercurial man at the back, um, they're a very good side. Uh, Green Island, so there won't be much in it. And that's up. That's us for this week. We'll be back with you again next. I think it might be next Wednesday, but I'll. Well, it'll be next Wednesday or Thursday. Can he get around his man? He can. Look at the gas. Look at the gas. Try.